This video is brought to you by Nano, creators of virtual reality tools for immersive molecular visualization and interaction. Follow the link in the video description to download Nano and explore molecules yourself. I want to take a moment to talk about supersecondary structures and motifs before we get into tertiary structure. Okay, so let's start off with a little def definition. Okay, so when it comes to um, supersecondary structures and motifs, the two terms are sometimes used interchangeably, sometimes they're used slightly differently. So um, supersecondary structures are basically combinations of secondary structures that, one, have a particular characteristic shape, and two, appear in a variety of proteins. Okay, uh, like, like I said, sometimes that, that also just, that definition applies for motifs as well. Okay, um, I, for the most part, use the terms interchangeably. Some people don't. And I'll get to kind of where people talk about them as super secondary structures and when they talk about them as motifs. Okay, so let me give you some examples of some secondary structures. Okay, so here we have a beta hairpin to the far left. We've got two anti parallel beta strands connected by this little loop here, this little beta turn. Okay, so that that is a combination of two secondary structures, two beta pleated sheets. Um, and that specific situation there is a beta hairpin. Okay, uh, we can also have two parallel uh, beta pleated sheets with an alpha helix between them. That's specifically a beta alpha beta unit. Okay, that's a super secondary structure. Uh, beta meander. So we, here we got a series of anti-parallel beta pleated sheets. There's five that I've drawn specifically. And they're connected start to finish from here, here around, and then down here, and then up, and then down all the way through to that fifth one. Okay, so that is a beta meander. Now that's very similar to the Greek key in that we have these beta pleated sheets all anti parallel, but the connection is different. Okay, instead of just going up and up and over, and then down and up, and then up and over, and down and up. Here we're, we're starting from the far right, go up, and we don't go directly to the one next to it, we go to this one here, and then we come back to go up, and then up and through, and then down and all the way over to the left. Okay, so that specific combination and connectivity is a Greek key. That combination of, of beta pleated sheets is called a Greek key. And then we have a helix turn helix which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. We've got an alpha helix, a little turn, and then another alpha helix. So here we have a protein called pin one, and in it, we have a beta hairpin. So if we zoom in here, we can follow this beta strand um, up in this direction, then uh, around this hairpin loop to the base of this beta sheet, which we can follow here to where it ends here. So this here is human proliferating cell nuclear antigen. And as you can tell, it's got a lot of different beta pleated sheets. And in it, it's got this sort of beta meander type structure. Um, so if we take it out, uh, we can see that it's not a complete beta meander, but it does have these alternating uh, beta pleated sheets. Uh, for instance, this one starts right here and we could follow it down like this. And then it's got this little loop at the bottom here and then it goes back in this other anti-parallel beta sheet and then we have another loop and then we can come down uh, this strand as well. So that's kind of how a beta meander looks. So over here we have the protein banana lectin and um, it's got a bunch of Greek keys and so what I did was I highlighted uh, this specific chain and I removed its atoms and bonds and just to sort of reveal the beta pleated sheets and then I cut off the portion that was just one Greek key. And that's how I got this over here, right over to the left. So let's get rid of that and take a closer look at this Greek key. So if we zoom in on it, um, first we start off um, down here and with this beta strand that sort of goes up. And then we have this long loop that leads into this anti-parallel beta strand. And then we have this smaller loop here and then another uh, anti-parallel strand that's going upwards. Uh, and then we get uh, another one of these uh, small loops that leads into this other anti-parallel strand and that leads into another small loop and then we have this anti-parallel strand going upwards and then another large loop at the very end leading and ending with that beta sheet there. So that's a Greek key.
So this is catabolite activator protein, and it's got a helix turn helix in it. It's actually right here. So we can see here we've got a helix, a little turn, and then another helix. And uh, this can actually be seen more obviously if we get rid of um, all the different atoms and bonds, uh, and we just take a look at it um, like this, right? So we can take a look at this and see the helix here, and then we have the turn, and then we have the helix uh, over here on this end. And this can go through and fit into the protein right there. Okay, so these guys tend to show up um, in proteins in this way. And for that reason, and because they're combinations of secondary structures, they're called super secondary structures. Sometimes they're called motifs. Now, um, there are some motifs that are, uh, or super secondary structures that are worth mentioning. Um, so, some notable motif. The first one I'll talk about is zinc fingers. Um, and these guys are common in DNA binding proteins. Okay, so specifically transcription factors. Transcription factors, of course, are proteins that bind the DNA and are involved in, um, in helping with transcription, so turning DNA to RNA. And those proteins, those transcription factors, often have these little zinc fingers. Now, a zinc finger has, there are actually multiple kinds of zinc fingers. The one I've drawn here is specifically called the um, the C2H2 zinc finger or the Cis2His2 zinc finger because we've got these two beta pleated sheets. We've got a sheet here, a sheet here, and it kind of goes into this alpha helix. And there are um, two cysteines here and here and two histidines here and here that are anchored to this zinc ion. Okay, and um, this little loop here that I've drawn ends up looking something like like this over to the right. So we have a combination of zinc fingers here. And um, in a protein, it kind of looks like that. All these little circles represent uh, amino acids in a chain. And so on a, on a larger scale, you can imagine a protein with these little finger-like projections coming out of them. And these are important in binding DNA. Okay, here's a quick visual of what a zinc finger might look like on a DNA strand. So of course, back here is the actual DNA strand. And here we've got that, um, that helix and the two uh, beta sheets that actually make up that zinc finger. And here they are associated with the DNA double helix. Okay, um, so it's, it's notable because this, this comes up and shows up pretty often in, um, in DNA binding proteins. Okay. So, um, yeah, as far as super secondary structures and motifs, I, like I said, this is, you can call this a motif. You can call it a secondary structure unless you come across someone who says otherwise, but I tend to use them, like I said, interchangeably though. Not everyone does. Okay. Um, another notable motif, leucine zippers. Okay, or leucine scissors. And uh, they're also common in DNA binding proteins as well, um, transcription factors namely. Uh, so here we have, of course, some DNA. Um, and uh, there are some, so leucine zipper or uh, leucine scissors, basically it's a combination of two alpha helices that are kind of orient themselves kind of like a pair of scissors around DNA and they're used to, to bind the DNA. And of course, they're, they're part of transcription factors, which of course, some can have different functions than others, but essentially they're all involved in helping transcription happen. Um, so it looks something like this. Okay. And so notice it kind of looks like a pair of scissors. You know, you can imagine putting your hand around this portion here, the handle, uh, and kind of snipping away. Um, right, if, if you're thinking about this as a pair of scissors. Now they're called leucine zippers because there are these little leucine um, R groups on each of them here and here and here and here and there and there. Um, the kind of uh, the hydrophobic interactions between them allow them to interact and help be held together to a certain extent. Okay, and um, I don't really know a lot of the details about these. I just know that leucine zippers and leucine scissors or leucine scissors uh, tend to show up a lot in DNA binding proteins. So, um, namely, like, like I said, transcription factors. So it's just something that's worth knowing and being aware of. So here's a better visual of those leucine zippers or leucine scissors. Down there, of course, is the DNA 
And of course, these are the leucine zippers. And if we zoom in on them here, um, we can actually see these leucines, right? Um, there's a leucine uh, right here, and then a leucine right there, and then another leucine there, and then another leucine here. Uh, so those leucines are actually holding the structure together. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's basically it as far as motifs and uh, super secondary structures. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching.